Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking warp tunnel effect using Adobe After Effects. Anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine, uh, FPS of about 30 and a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid. And for this effect, I'm going to be using a plugin from Red Giant, which is called Mir. So if you do not have this plugin, it is a paid plugin from Red Giant. So please make sure you go and download it before continuing on with this tutorial. Once we have that out of the way, the next thing that we need to do is we need to open up the geometry settings and I'm just going to change the XYZ link to individual. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import some values. So I'm going to start with 4000 here and then I'm going to change the size Y to 12,000. Now we're going to be coming back to those settings. So um, and we'll see what it looks like once we start to get the tunnel all happening. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to change the rotate X to negative 90. We also need to change the bend Y to 0.1. And then what we need to do is um, I'm just going to move this value down a bit. And I'm going to zoom out and then I'm just going to grab this point or that point there. I'm just going to move it until my tunnel is in the center. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect just as long as you have the hole in the middle. So once we've got that out of the way, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change these values to let's say 20 and 30. And then I'm going to change the tessellate to quads. Now you obviously can't see anything here, but if we go down to the shader settings and we change the uh, the draw to let's say wireframe, now you can actually see what is happening here. Now it's still a bit wobbly and so what we're going to do is we're going to fix that by going to fractal and I'm just going to change the amplitude to 10. Now if you want it even more straighter you can change it to zero but I'm just going to leave it at 10 for now and then I'm going to change the frequency to let's say 200 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the scroll wise. So I'm going to hit option on my Mac and hit that little stopwatch button. This will bring up the expressions and I'm just going to write time times 500. Now if you want it to go faster, obviously increase the number, but I'm pretty happy with that speed. Not too much, you know, it's not that crazy. So that's pretty good. So now once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is I need to come down to the F bend X. I'm going to change that to 0.01 and so now I've got this cool looking curve and so now if I preview that you can see what is actually happening and that looks really really nice. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down back to the shader settings maybe increase the line size to about three just so it's a little bit more visible. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new camera and I'm just going to run with a 35mm camera, I'm just going to press OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the camera options and just change the zoom settings. So I'm going to zoom this out, maybe something like that. Now you've got to be careful here because the more you zoom out, the more you have to fix uh, this part so it goes actually off the screen. So I mean that looks pretty nice, but now we have to go back into Mir to fix up that you know kind of section there and so how we can do that is we can come down to the size x and the size y so if i drag that up now i've got to drag it until it gets off the screen and now you can see now we have this kind of perfect tunnel that keeps on going and you could loop this kind of forever so that looks pretty good uh, the next thing you, that you can do is you can change some of these things around as well. So for example, if you want more of these things in here, you can change the vertices Y. Or if you want more spirals in your tunnel to create a real kind of trippy look, you can. But I, I'm, I'm happy with this, so I'm just going to leave it at that. So the next thing that we need to do is we just need to add slight rotation to the camera. So I'm just going to open up the transform settings, make sure that I'm on the first keyframe and I'm just going to change the Z rotation to let's say negative 20. So it starts off on a bit of an angle. I'm going to hit that stopwatch and then I'm just going to move to the end of the timeline and put it to positive 20. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have this nice slight movement to the tunnel. So that just adds to the effect. 
Now remember, if you want to change any of these settings, all right, you can change uh, that expression by pressing EE and that will bring up all the expressions. So if I change that to 1000, it will be faster, but I'm pretty happy with that. So now what we need to do is we just need to fix up the dots in here. So to do that, what I need to do is I just need to duplicate that layer. And so I don't get confused. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename that to dots. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down to the shader settings and I'm going to change the wireframe to points. Now, obviously nothing really happens there, but once we start to go uh, to our geometry settings, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the size X and size Y and I'm really just going to bring them up. Now, you can't really see what's happening here, but I'm just adding some more dots. And if I increase the vertices X and the vertices Y, now you can get some kind of unique looks to that tunnel. So you can take this how crazily you want. So if you keep on increasing, then everything comes a bit more closer together or you could have something like that. And now you've got this cool looking tunnel that has all these kind of dots uh, in there as well. So that's looking pretty nice. So the final thing that we're left to do is we are left to dress it up. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid for a background. And I'm just going to call that BG, put it underneath everything. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to make sure that it's at the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for an effect called shine. Now shine is a red, red, now shine is a red giant plugin. So please make sure you have it before continuing on. I'm just going to go down to colorize and I'm just going to search for the effect called aura. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my dots and what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for another effect and I'm just going to change the fill on here. So I'm going to put the fill on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to color hunt and I'm going to choose this color for these dots. So now it's got like a cool purple kind of tinge to it. And so that's looking pretty cool. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down to my mirror settings and I'm going to add some glow. So now that I've added the glow, I can, you know, play around with some of the intensity, you know, maybe make it a little bit more intense or I can increase the glow radius. Um, but I'm just going to increase maybe the glow radius to about 15. And I think that's looking pretty nice. And then the final thing that we can do is we can go back to our adjustment layer and I'm just going to put this one on top and I'm just going to search for the effect called curves. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to bump up this part down here as well as the top bit over there. And you can see what actually happens like when you start to play around with some of these settings, you know, you can get some really nice, you know, effects coming through. And so the final effect that we can put in here is just some noise. So if you go and search for some effect uh, called noise, and then you bump that up to about 8%, now you've got this cool kind of glowing tunnel effect. And yeah, and so that's about it. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this quick short tutorial on how to create a warped glowing tunnel. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.